Hello and welcome to another episode of creating an underwater survival game like Subnautica. This is part 6 and in this part we're going to be creating the hotbar for the game. So before we get into that, first things first, I'm going to add a crosshair to the game. It's just so that we can see what object we're pointing to at any point of time. So I'm going to go over to Game Manager and then to Player Canvas. Then I'm going to create a UI image. I'm going to call it Crosshair. So the crosshair will just be in the center of, of the screen. So that so I'm just going to go to art and I'm going to upload uh, the crosshair sprite I made for this video. Just have to set it to a sprite, do the usual. Then here, just going to drag it in and uh, I'll put the size as 30 by 30. So now if we take a look, as you can see, there's a crosshair now that shows up, and you can see exactly what you're pointing to at any given moment. The next thing we're going to do is, if you've noticed from the inventory, there's a glitch where when you drop items from inventory, the spawn point is the camera, so they actually spawn inside the player character, and that's not very desirable, so we're going to change the spawn point of that. So it's really easy to do, you just need to go to player and then main character and you create an empty game object. I'm just going to call this item spawn point. So if we go to our main character and item spawn point, so I'm specifically going to set my arrows to be local. So yeah, item spawn point is exactly on the camera. I'm just going to pull it forward a bit. Yeah, maybe by 0 0.7. So now the items will spawn at we want we'll make items spawn at this point instead of inside the player's head. So now that that's created, we'll just go to the player controller script real quick to change that. So if I scroll down to player interaction right below camera, I'm just gonna add in a new transform called drop item point. After that, in a wake, I'm just going to assign the drop item point. So we're just making a note of the drop item point here so we can assign it to the player controller. And then later on, we'll add a reference to it in the I system and then just assign it from the player controller so that it has the drop item point. So right now, the inventory system is accessing the player controller's camera and then using that as, a, as the place to spawn the items. So instead, I'm just going to cache the value of the drop item transform in the inventory system and then uh, spawn it from there. So I'm just going to add this line of code. Uh, let, it'll be, because we haven't cached the value in iSystem yet, it's going to be an error, but it'll go away once we do that. Lastly, I wanted to make a small change to the interaction because later on, after we finish the hotbar, in the next episode, we're going to be doing interacting with objects. So here we would have to we would have to add an object interaction to the player controller using tool interaction. So I'm just going to change this part here. So we just need to delete this, and um, actually we just need to put an else if here. So basically, what we're doing is like the storage and crafting, we're adding a tag for items that can be picked up and we'll assign them all to the prefabs afterwards. So that's all for the player controller for now. If we go to the inventory system, I'm just gonna add a transform here. So this drop item point is set in the player controller. So now we just move down to move item. Here we have the code that will uh, remove the item from the inventory and spawn it into the world. So here, instead of taking player controller dot position, I'll just use 
drop item position. And now objects will spawn at the drop item point instead of directly in the player. So real quick, I'm going back to the Unity and I'm going to add a new tag and add to all the prefabs that can be picked up. So all of these items can be picked up. So just add the tag to all of all of the prefabs. Yeah. One more thing. On the player controller, of course, you have to assign drop item point, which is item spawn point. Let's just do a quick test to see if this is working. So now if I go over to the game, as you can see, we can still hover over items. They still have our outline working properly and still pick up items. And then if I open my inventory and we right click an item, as you can see now it spawns in front of us instead of inside the camera. Of course, when you drop items or the inventory is open, the time scale is set to zero, so they stand still until you start, uh, when, until you exit your inventory again. With that done, we can now move on to working on the hotbar. So in Subnautica, the hotbar does a couple of things. So first of all, in the first place, when you want to assign items to a hotbar, you need to open up your inventory and only in the inventory menu, not the storage menu or anywhere else, can you assign items to the hotbar. And then there are only a few types of items that can be assigned to the hotbar. The things that can be assigned are small fauna, tools, some equipment, and placeable items. So in order to differentiate between the different types of items, I'm going to edit the item scriptable object so that we can uh, set an items category. So I'm going to go to scripts, then I'm going to go to inventory, then I'm going to open up interactable uh, item scriptable object. So in order to do the categories, I'm going to first create an enum. So the categories I'm going to do are generic, tool, small fauna, placeable, and equipable. After that, right under ID, I'm going to create a public item categories and I'm going to call it item type. So now, whenever for every item scriptable object we have, we can assign an item type to this object. You'll note actually that in the enum, I set the first value to be generic. This is to so that generic is the default value for all scriptable objects. So let's quickly go and assign all of the objects that we currently have. So all of these plants will be generic type. For the deodorant and the knife, we're going to set them to be tool. For minerals, they should all be um, generic. And then we don't need to set the recipes to anything because they're recipes. Yeah, so as we add more items to the game, we can make use of these item categories to do different things for each item. So in order to create the hotbar, the first thing we need is a new class which I call hotbar slot. So there'll be one hotbar slot assigned to each slot in the uh, hotbar UI, and it will keep track of what item is currently in the hotbar, and it will have the functions to settle the changing of the hotbar. So if I return to scripts, and then I go to inventory. So in inventory, I'm just gonna create a folder called hotbar. Then on the hotbar, I'm going to create the hotbar slot. So first of all, I'm going to add a Unity Engine UI because in the hotbar slot or UI, we'll be changing the picture so that it reflects what the current item in the hotbar is. So there's a few things we're going to need. Uh, there'll be a, start, a static transform called the hand, which is a transform of where the player's hand is. This will be used later when we do equipping of items from the hotbar. Next, I'll be creating a game object variable, which will be used in keeping track of the game object that is spawned when an item is equipped from the hotbar. After that, we'll have an image variable for the hotbar slot. And, and then we'll have an interactable UI object, which will be what keeps track of which inventory item is, is assigned to the hotbar. Lastly, we need a blank sprite, which the slot will swap to when there's no item assigned to it. So in start, you'd want to get the image component of the slot. 
then in update, we want to set the slot sprite sprite to blank sprite whenever the inventory item identifier is null. Next up, let's do the functions to change the slots. So first function, I'm going to create a function called set slot. So when you put in an interactable UI object from the inventory, it will change the hotbar as well as change the sprite and make sure that the hotbar is set correctly. So the first function we're going to do is set slot. So this function will just set the slot of the, of the current slot bus slot. So for this function, we'll be taking in an interactable UI object from the inventory. There is a reason we aren't just taking an item scriptable object. And this is because you can set multiple items to different slots. So for example, if we had two knives, we could set one knife to slot one and one knife to slot two. However, if we gave the item scriptable object, it wouldn't be able to keep track of which knife is in which slot. And that would be a problem. So that's why we're using the interactable UI object to keep track of which exact knife in the inventory it is. So I'm going to write the function. So here we have an if statement just in case the hotbar inventory slot item identifier is set to null. Our next function is called spawn hotbar items. So whenever the inventory menu closed, we want to initialize all of the hotbar items so that we can open and close them while in the real world. So basically, we're just going to instantiate a prefab of each item into the hand of the player and then swap between which one is on and off. So if there's no item assigned to the hotbar, we'll just skip this function. Then we'll destroy our current item, then we'll spawn in our item. Lastly, we're going to set up the item for tool use instead of world use. So we're just going to destroy its rigid body and box collider. So our last two functions are display item and hide item. So this will just display and hide the hotbar item when we're swapping between hotbar items in the player controller. One more thing that we missed out is if we go back to start, actually for sort sprite, this is supposed to be get component in children. This is because we're going to be putting the image component on a child of hotbar slot instead of directly on hotbar slot. With that, we finish the hotbar slot class. Now we can go on to inventory system. So if I go back to inventory system, we're going to be using inventory system to keep track of the hotbar slots. So if we go over to our inventory update, we can see here that we have the code for moving the items. However, there is a way we can improve this code so as to make it better. So before we do the hotbar item stuff, I'm going to refactor this code to make it better. So firstly, we only want to run the code for our hotbar or for our movement of items if the inventory menu is open. Before, we would only check what's forward after the conditions for moving an item was met. For example, if the menu is open and we clicked. But if we're doing our hotbar, we'll actually need to know what object is hovered at all times so that we can set the hotbar too. That's why we're changing the structure of the code here so that it actually does, it actually checks what's being hovered during, uh, during update. So now we'll find IO. So now if we're not hovering over anything, we'll return the function. Now we can actually put back in the code that moves item from storage area to storage area. So here we need to check if the current menu is this menu or if the current menu is the SM menu. So in order to do that, we need to add SM to here. And then in a wake, after sort items, we just set SM. 
the thing is, current menu is this is a function in the UI base class. So we actually want to edit this uh, function so that it works for checking any different menu. So if I go over to UI base class and I open it up. So down here in UI base class, I'm just going to add another version of the current menu is this function. And instead of no input, I'm just going to put game object menu. So if we do current object is this, or check if it's the menu of the current UI base class, but we can also check if it's the menu of a different UI base class. So if we return to inventory system, if we go back down to here, we check if current menu is this, or if current menu is equal to sm.menu. So if it's in the inventory menu or the storage area menu, then we can do the move item um, function, which will either throw away the item or move it to from storage unit to storage unit. Oh, one more thing. Small bug over here. I got the logic wrong. This part, the current menu is this and current menu is SM menu, actually need a um, bracket around them so that um, it always needs to input get mouse button down and then it needs either one of these menus to be open instead of the other way around. Now that we've refactored the update, we can now make the hotbar code. So if I go back here to the variables, I'm going to create a header and put in a couple of things we need to keep track of the hotbar slots. So the main hotbar will be a list of all the hotbar slots that exist in the game. Then I'm also going to keep a list of the keys that we'll be using to assign the hotbar. Or, and these same keys will also be used to equip items when we're outside of the UI menus. Lastly, we'll uh, put a sprite blank sprite here so that we can set the blank sprite of hotbar slot. So if we go down to awake after SM, we just need to set the blank sprite of hotbar slot. After this, I'm going to create a new region. So I'm just going to minus off interactive with items. So the first thing we need to do is to create a function that checks if an item is hotbar equipable. So if you recall earlier in the item scriptable object, we added categories to the item. So I'm just going to make a function that checks if the category of the item is something that can be equipped to a hotbar. From the types we have right now, every item type is equipable except for items of generic type. If in your own game you want to have different item types that can be equipable, feel free to change this function in any way that you like. So the next thing, we're going to do the functions that will assign or disassign items to the hotbar. So the way Subnautica's hotbar works is when you open your inventory, you can assign the hotbar. And when the inventory is closed, you can uh, equip or de-equip items on your hotbar. When you're in the inventory menu, when you, when you hover over an item and then you press the hotbar number, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 keys, then that item will be assigned to the hotbar slot. If an item is assigned to hotbar slot 1 and you, if you click the 4 key, then it will remove the item from hotbar slot 1 and then assign it to hotbar slot 4. And then um, in the Subnautica hotbar, another thing you can do is you can equip more than one I item of the same type to different hotbar slots, but it will keep track of which item exactly in the inventory it is which is why we're using inventory UI object instead of item schedule objects when assigning to the hotbar. So let's write this function. So this function will take in the object that you want to assign to the hotbar as well as the slot number you are assigning it to. Next up, if you remember in Subnautica, so if an item is assigned to hotbar slot 1 and then you reassign it to hotbar slot 1, it actually clears hotbar slot 1. So let's add that to the function right now.
And then the third part would be if the item is already assigned to a different hotbar slot, we need to disassign the hotbar, that hotbar slot before we assign it, the hotbar item to there. So here, we're going to do a for loop to check every hotbar slot. And then if that hotbar slot has this item, we'll disassign that slot. And finally, now we can assign the item to the hotbar slot. So we've created our hotbar functions. Now, um, the last thing we need to do before to implement set the setting of items in the hotbar is to update the update function. So back here in update, after all of the code for moving items around, I'm going to add one more block here. So here, we're just going to detect if any of the hotbar keys have been pressed. And then if they have, we'll just call assign item to hotbar and then break the loop. So now if I return to the Unity, if I go to Game Manager, I can go to I can go to inventory system. So drop item point will be set by the player controller. And over here, um, we can put in all of the hotbar slots. Here I'll put in all five hotbar keys. So the row of keys above your keyboard are known as the alpha numbers. So I'm gonna put alpha one, two, three, four, and five. Then I'm going to upload a blank sprite so that we can use it for the hotbar slots. So since we haven't set up the hotbar UR yet, we'll just leave this empty for now, but we'll put it in later. Okay. Um, now we're going to create the hotbar UI, and after that, we'll assign it to the inventory system. So first, I'm going to go to Player Canvas, and then I'm going to create an empty game object. So in the hotbar, I'm going to add a layout component. I'm going to set the child alignment to middle center. Then I'm going to go to prefabs and then the inventory item prefab. And I'm just going to drag it under hotbar. So hotbar itself will be at the bottom of the screen and then slightly raised. And then inventory item, I'm going to uh, unpack the preset. I'm just going to remove interactable UI object and I'm going to add hotbar slot. Then I'm just going to set the image to none or to the blank sprite. So here I'm just going to, I'm going to rename this to hotbar slot. And I'm just going to duplicate this five times. So now we have all of the hotbar slots. Yeah, then I'm just going to adjust the width of this to be longer and the height to be a slightly higher. The height can remain at 100. I'll make the width 500. So now you can see we have all of the hotbar slots here. Then we can assign them to the inventory system. Just lock that. Drag in all of these items. Now we have all of the hotbar slots. Okay, now if we return back to our Unity and we click play, if we look around, we can pick up some items that are on the floor. I'll pick up this item here and then take items from the storage. As you can see, moving items and dropping items still works just fine. Now, if I click on this fish, I can set it to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I have a different fish, I can actually set it to a different slot. And I can also deset the slot or replace it with a different item. And it keeps track of exactly which item it is. So here I can put in the deodorant. 
these items here can't be set but this one can and I can move it over to the other places and then set something else in other slots and the like and as you can see now it, the hotbar works when we're in the play when we're outside of any of the inventories or menus um, as you can see it doesn't do anything yet because we haven't made the code for it so that's what we're going to do next one last thing we need to do in the inventory system is to put in the logic for opening and closing the hotbar. So this is so that if we're not in the inventory or we're not in uh, playing in the world, the hotbar will be turned off. So how I'm going to do this is first I'm going to make a reference to the actual hotbar game object. Then in update, if the menu isn't open, we want the hotbar to be set active. Now is the part where we deactivate the hotbar. So if the inventory menu is open, we want the hotbar to also be set active. But if any other menu is open, then we want the hotbar to be set to false. So if the current menu is in this, so if this is any other menu, it will actually turn off the hotbar. But if it is inventory, then the hotbar will already have been active from when the menu was closed. So here, basically, if it's any other menu, the hotbar will be deactivated to show that you can't use it or change it. But then if it is the current menu, then the hotbar will be set active. So if I go down to the Unity and I go to Game Manager, I can now assign the hotbar to hotbar holder. And it should disappear when we open any other menu. So let's play test. So as you can see here, I've got some items in my inventory. I'm going to go ahead and pick up some other random items. So now I'm going to grab some items from the chest. So if I open up my inventory, I can assign items to the hotbar. And you see, if I have an item in one slot, if I click on the same slot, it will deactivate it. I can also move it to other slots. So, and if I have my items of the same type but multiple versions of them I can also move them to other slots and it keeps track of them. So I'm just going to assign a couple of items to the inventory. So you see now we're in play mode where none of the menus are open we can see the hot bar and if we open our inventory we can still see it but if we open our storage we can put items away and we can no longer see it. And then we can also take items out of storage. And if we open our, event, our crafting menu, we also can't see it again. Now, one last thing before we, for equipping of items is, if you recall earlier in hotbar slot, we made a function that will actually spawn in all of the items that we need for the hotbar. So we need to call this whenever we close the inventory. Luckily, we have a function to do exactly that. So in inventory at the bottom, we're just going to override the close menu functions of the inventory in order to um, spawn in the hotbar items. So this will be called every time we close the inventory menu to in, or in order to initialize the hotbar items. Now in order to make the logic for equipping and de-equipping items, we're going to go over to player controller. So I'm going to open up the player controller. So first of all, under play interaction, I'm going to add a couple of variables pertaining to the hotbar. I'm going to add in the list of the key codes for the hotbar keys. I'm also going to save an int, which will keep track of which item is being held. I'm going to get the list of hotbar slots from the inventory system. And I'm also going to keep a track of a transform of the hand position of the player. So here in Awake, I'm going to set the hotbar key list as well as the hotbar list and then set the static hotbar hand transform as hand. After this, I'm going to go to the interaction functions region. I'm going to add a new function. So this function is going to be called hold item and basically it will be control the logic for equipping items uh, from the hotbar into your hand. So in Subnautica, for equipping item function, basically the logic is like this. If you press a number, you'll equip the item according to that slot on your hotbar. So if you press 1, you'll hold the first item on your hotbar. If you press 1 again, you will unequip the item. 
And if you press a different number, you'll equip the item from that number. So I'm going to transfer that logic over to here. So as you can see, we're using the hide item and display item functions from the hotbar slot class. Now the last thing we need to do in order to implement tool equ equipping tools is if we go to update and right below all of the interaction code we have. So if we go to update in player controller and we see here we have all of these all of this code that handles the um, the interaction with objects in the world. Below that we're just going to add another section. We're just going to add the code that detects when the a hotbar key is pressed. It, it's actually almost the same as the inventory system. So what I'm going to do is go to inventory system and I'm going to go to update. And the hotbar key pressing detection, I'm just going to copy and paste it over. So as you can see here, we just need to detect when a key is being pressed. And then when it is being pressed, I'll actually call hold item. So that's all for equipping items. Let's see this in action. So first of all, there are a few things we need to assign. So if we go over to player, we just need to assign the hand transform. So if I go down to the main camera, I'm going to create another empty game object and I'm just going to call it hand. So if I look at the game screen, I'm just going to put it on the side here. Underhand, I'm just going to spawn in a random item. For example, this office knife. So I'm going to reset the position as well as the rotation, but revert the scale so that it is according to the prefab. So I'm going to move out the knife from the front of the camera and just adjust the position until the desired place. I'm also going to rotate the item. So once you adjust it to your liking, you can delete the item from here and then um, you can set the hand. So this is the hand that the hotbar slot will use in order to, um, to spawn in the items when you're doing hotbar equip. One last thing before we start is actually we want to set the position of every single prefab to be at 000, because sometimes when you make the prefabs, it'll set the position to a random world position and that's not good if we want to instantiate prefabs into the world. Now we can finally test our uh, the equipping of items. So I'm going to hit play. Then I'm just going to pick up some items to equip in the inventory. So here I'm going to equip some items. And now um, if I click one, it will make the item appear. And I click one again, it disappears actually. And here um, I can equip the other items. So things like the knife, the deodorant, the fish. Yeah, so that's the equipping for the hotbar. I can swap between items, so on and so forth. Um, actually, there was a problem with the hotbar system. Because of the way the inventory sorting works, we can't actually use the interactable UI object to keep track for the hotbar because whenever the inventory is resorted, the interactable UI objects are all changed. 
so instead we'll be using the, using the item scriptable objects. However, this does come with the limitation that you cannot assign more than one of the same item in your hotbar. However, if we wanted to do that, we would have to refactor a lot of the inventory uh, system code and that would be a lot more difficult than swapping the hotbar to be using item scriptable object instead. So let's do it. So the first thing we need to do is to go to hotbar slot and then edit the script there. So instead of interactable UI object, we'll change it to item scriptable object. Then over here for set slot, we'll change it to item scriptable object. And then we have to fix the bugs because hotbar inventory item identifier is now item scriptable object. We don't have to get dot item. And same thing over here when you spawn the prefab. Then we need to reflect this change in the inventory system. If we go down to our hotbar functions, here we will want to use item.item. .item. Then here we would change um, this to be an item scriptable object as well. And then we can just remove these extra parts here. So you see, if this is item scriptable object, then hotbar equitable will check the item and then so on and so forth. So here in assign item to hotbar, instead of the interactable object, we do interactable object dot item. With that, our hotbar should be able to work normally. Now we need to create the function that will disassign an item from the hotbar if the item is no longer in the inventory. So whenever an item is removed from the inventory, either moved to a storage unit or spawned into the world, we need to check the hotbar to see if there's if the item if any of the items assigned there are no longer in the inventory and then we need to disassign them. So I'm just gonna create this function really quick. I'm going to create a new function called check hotbar and it'll check every hotbar item and then see if every single item in the hotbar is in the inventory. And if it isn't, that means the item was removed, so we have to re update the hotbar. So I'm going to call check hotbar every time an item is moved from the inventory. So I need to go over to move item function. So here, if the item is thrown out in the world, we want to call check hotbar. Then if the item has also been put into storage, then we also call check hotbar. With that, the hotbar should now update whenever you remove items from your inventory. So now if I click play, So if I pick up a couple of fishies, now you'll notice that the hotbar will only support having one of each item type in the hotbar at a time. This is just because of the way our code is structured. However, if I remove a fish, you see the item remains. Unless I remove all fish, then the hotbar will update. Same thing goes if I have other items that can be equipped in the hotbar. If I put them away in a chest, the hotbar will update also. Now for the last part of the video, we need the hotbar to hide the item when we open the inventory. Because when we go to our hotbar and we pick up an item, so for example, I set this fish here, I can hold the fish, but when I open the inventory, the fish is still in my hand. So that's not something that we want. So let's fix this in the code. So the first thing we need to do is to create a function to hide the hotbar item. So I'm going to go to player controller. Then I'm going to go to interaction functions. So over here below the howled item function, I'm going to add a new function called hide hotbar item. It will basically check if the item held is not negative one which means if you're holding an item in your hand, and then it'll just hide the item. Oh yeah, one more thing. We also need to set item held to uh, negative one. So now we need to go to our UI base class. 
uh, since we want to hide the equip item or to unequip the hotbar item whenever we open any menu, uh, it's, it makes most sense to attach this function to the UI base class. So I go over to the base class to the open menu function. On top here, I'll just add another line. And here I'll just do, um, I'll just call the function here. Well, instead of calling player controller.instance every single time we open any menu, um, it might be better to just have the play controller as a static variable in the UI base class. So, so I'm just going to add a start. Um, I'm going to add a start function here because all of our UI classes that they inherit from the UI base class use awake instead of start. So I'll just use start to set the play controller. Then over here, I can change this to PC. This is also good for the UI base class because from now on, PC is a public static um, variable of the UI base class. So every single UI class can, can reach it without having to do anything. So let's test this out. If I equip this item on my hotbar, then I equip it. If I open up my menu, you can see now it's no longer equipped. And then I can equip it again. So it just automatically unequips your item whenever you open up any menus. Okay, that's all for today's episode of making an underwater survival game like Subnautica. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to uh, leave a like and subscribe. Comment if you have any questions. Um, if you want to support our channel, you can help us by becoming a patron because this will give you access to project files for all of our tutorials as well as Patreon exclusive posts on the blog. So any support you give will go a really long way. Right now, we're not making as much money back as we are putting into the content creation. So if you donate, we'll be able to make this a long-term and more sustainable endeavor. See you in the next video.